All right, hello everyone. Welcome to your practice. As you come to your mat today, I um, highly recommend having a blanket, at the very least a blanket. Um, if you do have something that works like a block or blocks at home, you can grab that. So like um, couch cushions, pillows, a stool, a chair, blocks themselves, of course, hardback books. So just getting creative as usual with what you have around you um, and that blanket. That's what I'd like you to have. So you're going to start out. <clears throat> And if you, if you need to take a moment and come back, we're going to just start out on our backs with one of our props underneath the sacrum, so the back of the pelvis. And so we'll be here for a few moments, and if you're grabbing those props and coming back, this is where you're going to meet me. So I'm bending my knees and planting my feet. I'm going to shrug my shoulders down my back and settle in here for a few moments of just stillness. Start to become aware of your breath here. Maybe close your eyes. Just let yourself settle and arrive. Start to feel the weight of the pelvis on whatever you're resting it on, whatever prop you're using. And just a key differenti differentiator, it's not the low back that's resting on this prop. It's below the low back, the sacrum. So the back of the pelvis. Let's take about three breaths here. Start to bend your left knee, hug it into the chest. You can wrap your hands around the shin bone or the back of the thigh, whatever you like. So with that left knee hugging into the chest, we're gonna extend the right leg out long. Just give it a little lengthening to the right leg, a little squeeze to the left leg. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then we'll switch sides. So the right knee will hug into the chest. The left leg will go long. If you can, left heel to the mat. And if that's not happening, then you can always just keep the knees bent. So whatever leg I'm saying to extend, you just keep that knee bent and the foot planted. And we're just going to go side to side here for a few moments. So hugging the left knee back into the chest, extending the right leg long if, if the low back can handle that. And then just start to find your own pace and your own rhythm, switching sides. Utilize your breath. And take a moment to pause and squeeze, hugging that bent knee thigh in towards the belly, lengthening out through the opposite leg. One more time to each side. And so we started hugging the left knee into the chest, so we'll end by hugging the right knee into the chest. And then we'll release both feet to the mat, knees bent. Just take a moment again, pause here, the weight of the pelvis on your prop. So today our focus will be, actually for the next few weeks, we're gonna be focusing on back bends. And so we're just prepping things like hip flexors, hamstrings, glutes, low back, um, in preparation for that. Press down into your feet, lift your hips up, move that prop out of the way. Tucking your tailbone under, release the low back and the tailbone into the mat. And then hug your knees into the chest, apanasana. You can wrap your hands around your shins, your knees, whatever you like, and just give yourself a little rock side to side. And then we'll come up into tabletop. You can make your way there whatever way you like. You might want to have, if you're using your blocks or something that are like blocks towards the top of your mat, and then you might want to keep that blanket handy just off to the side of your mat. 
in our tabletop, we'll press through those hands and extend the right leg back. Tuck the toes under just for a moment here to get your bearing through the palms of the hands nice and strong through the shoulders. Engage the navel into the spine. Keep that spine nice and long as you float the right toes off the mat. All we're gonna do here is bend the right knee so the sole of the foot points up towards the ceiling. And that knee is trying to stay in line with the hip. So I'm not moving out to the side. I'm not lifting too high. I'm just trying to engage my hamstring. Let's let the right leg go long, navel engaged, and then bend the knee. So all we're doing here is bending and straightening that right leg. Trying to wake up the hamstrings and the glute on the right side and also a little bit on the left side. Left, left knee is stabilizing, so that glute has to work a little bit here as you bend and straighten that right knee. One more time. And then right knee back into its place. Left leg extended, curl the toes, press down through the ball mount of the feet. Re-engage the whole palm, press down, strong through those shoulders, strong through the navel, and then float that left leg up. Okay, so the hip and the knee are pointing down the whole time. And then you'll start to bend the left knee so the foot looks at the ceiling. Keep that knee and hip in the same plane as you re-extend that left leg and just start to bend and straighten through the left side. So the only thing moving here is from the knee to the shin to the ankle and the foot, the lower, lower left leg. Everything else is staying stationary and stable. So can you feel your hamstring on the left side engage? Maybe a little bit glute on both left and right. Navel's hugging into the spine nice and strong there through the core. One more time, bend the knee and then straighten and then left knee back into its place. If your wrists need a little break here, you can come take a seat back on the heels, roll out the wrists, you can shake them out. And then when you're ready, we'll meet in a downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. It's really important to get that palm print firmly rooted into the ground. Engage your fingertips here, engage through the knuckle mounds as you curl the toes under and lift the hips up and back. It'll just take some time to explore your downward facing dog. Relax your head, find your breath here, reestablish the firm foundation of the hands. The chest starts to press back towards the thighs. Head relaxes, the whole spine lengthens. And sometimes to keep that length through the spine, we need to bend the knees a lot or a little. That's always welcome. Okay, so in our downward facing dog, let's inhale, lift the right leg up and back. And then exhale, step the right foot forward, left knee to the mat. Maybe you take your hands to your props at the top of the mat to lift up a little bit here. And for this first round, let's keep the top of that left foot pressing down. I actually want you to see if you can press down through that left foot. Keep that engagement of that left foot. Then back the hips up, lift the torso up a little bit. So this whole left hip compartment, front of the hip flexor in particular, is in a lengthened position doing some work. So we're trying to engage the quadricep muscle as we stretch it. Keep pressing down through the top of that left foot as you move your hips forward and down, just a touch. Not a big movement. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then you can come back to your downward facing dog. We're just gonna simply switch sides. Take a beat and down dog. And then when you're ready, left leg lifts. And left foot steps forward between the hands. Right knee to the mat. Come to the top of that right foot. Maybe your hands come to your prop. And I want you to actively press down through the top of that right foot. So the back of the foot is engaged. The whole back of the foot is engaged. And then the hands can come up to the thigh. You can back up through the hips a little bit. Lift up through the torso. And think about this right hip flexor, right quadricep, 
it's really active. It's actually doing a lot of work in this stretch position. Find your breath here. So in almost every single back bend we do, we need to lengthen the front of the thighs and the hip flexors and engage the hamstrings and the glutes. So that's what we're working on right now in the beginning of our class. Let's bring the hands back. We'll come back to downward facing dog. Take a moment here, breathe. Inhale, right leg lifts. And then exhale, right foot steps forward. Now this time as the left knee comes to the mat, this is where you might want a blanket underneath that left knee. Give it a little extra padding. Okay, so same kind of idea. First press down through the top of that left foot. Feel that engagement, that activation through that left leg. The whole left leg is working. And then I'm bringing my hands to my props. And then you can stay right here and do this really valuable work. Or if you want a little bit more hamstring and glute, bend the left knee, heel towards the glute. And it's not gonna get there, but you're just trying to activate your hamstring and glute. Then you can let it go long. And then you can let the knee bend. Same kind of work we did in tabletop, just with the left knee down. A lot harder to do it in this position because you're really working against gravity. All right, so here's the option. Keep moving or back up a little bit, left hand back to the outer left ankle. You're just gonna reach, you're not gonna hold. So this is an active range of motion. I'm just reaching, even if I can grab my ankle, I'm not gonna hold on to it. Reaching but not holding on. Okay, and then whatever you're doing, start to release out of that. We're just gonna simply switch sides, take a moment, downward facing dog. If that hamstring cramps up on you, probably sticking with a dynamic movement instead of the static hold will be better. Let's move on to the second side. Left leg lifts. Step left foot forward, right knee to the blanket. Come to the top of that right foot first. And as you back up, feel that top of the right foot pressing down. Hands to your props. We're just going to start off by bending the knee, squeezing that heel towards the glute, and then releasing. So get that hamstring to do some work. Get it to fire. A couple more times with that movement, and then I'll give you the optional static hold without actually holding on to anything. <laughs> so I know it's unsatisfying, but it's really important to teach the muscles how to work. So. The knee is bent if you're taking this option. And then the right hand's reaching back, but it's not holding on to anything. It's reaching back like as if it were gonna grab the outer ankle. Okay, so my palm is facing the ankle, my thumb's pointing down, and I'm just reaching back. And if you have that or whatever you're doing, start to release out of it. Downward facing dog. You can move the blanket out of the way. Whatever props you have at the top of the mat, if they're on your mat, you can move those out of the way. Three breaths here, downward facing dog. We're gonna flow a little bit, move some blood flow, circulate some energy throughout the body. We're gonna take about three rounds of Surya Namaskar A with some locust pose or belly down back bends. In Sanskrit, we call locust shalabhasana. So you'll hear me say that a few times. From down dog, lift the heels, bend the knees. Begin to make your way forward, top of the mat. When you get there, inhale, halfway lift. Use that core. Exhale, fold. Press through those feet, stand all the way up, reach up. Exhale, pull your elbows wide. We're gonna rotate off to your left hip, elbows wide. So see if you can keep the hips pointing forward. You're just rotating the upper body. Inhale back through center, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, elbows wide. 
rotate the torso towards the right hip, but keep that right hip pointing forward. Inhale, arms overhead, back to neutral. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to high plank. Just take a moment, pause in high plank. And then we'll set the knees to the mat. We'll come all the way down to the belly. Okay, so Shalabhasana or Locust. Hands alongside the body, palms face down. Tuck the chin and rest the forehead. Lift and hover the right foot, stretch it back. Lift and hover the left foot, stretch it back. Keep that. Lift the chest, reach the crown of the head forward. Keep pressing down through the hands. So feel the shoulder blades squeeze together. And can you feel the action of this lift coming between the shoulder blades, not the low back, and the glutes and the hamstrings? Let's bring the palms underneath the shoulders. Let everything go. And we'll make our way up to downward facing dog. So for today, We'll utilize Shalabhasana, some locust pose variations for our back bend of choice when we come to the belly. Let's take one more breath in downward facing dog. Lift the heels, slight bend in the knees. Make your way forward, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Press through those feet, stand up, reach up. Exhaling, elbows wide, hips stay forward, rotate the torso towards your left. Inhale, back through center, reach up. Exhale, elbows wide. So rotate the upper torso towards your right, hips stay pointing forward. Inhale, back through center, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant those palms, step back, high plank. Just give yourself a moment to breathe in high plank. And then set those knees down, come all the way to the belly. Set up for second round of Shalabhasana Locust. Tuck the chin, rest the forehead, hands alongside the body, palms face down. Inhale, extend the right leg, float it. Reach through those toes, add the left leg. Lift the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and this time float the hands off the mat. Turn the palms to face one another and give those shoulder blades a squeeze in towards the spine. Palms underneath the shoulders, release the legs. Press up to downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Let's lift the heels, bend the knees, travel forward, top of your mat, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift, exhale, fold, Uttanasana, press through those feet, reach tall, Urdhva Hasta and Tadasana, exhale, hands to the heart, with the hands to the heart, rotate the chest to your left, and then back through center, Keep those hands at the heart, rotate the chest towards your right. Inhale back through center, sweep the arms out and up. One more time through our flow, exhale, fold in. I'm gonna give you the option to bind in your Shalabhasana this time. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant those hands, high plank. Lower all the way to the belly. Set up for Shalabhasana in the same way you have been. Take it step by step. Float the right leg, find the length. Left leg, find the length. Lift the chest, find the length through the crown of the head and the spine. Squeezing the shoulder blades together. Lift the hands, palms face one another. Before you even think about binding, if that's going to happen, squeeze the shoulder blades in towards the spine. And then maybe interlace the fingers to the webbing, reaching the knuckles back. Shoulders move down and away from the ears. Whatever variation you're taking, release it. Hands underneath the shoulders. 
Meet me in downward facing dog. Three breaths. All right, this time we're gonna shift forward to high plank. And then just take a seat on your knees. I just wanna demonstrate this round first. And also I wanna mention that the direction we're going towards um, Danyarasana bow pose, it might actually be nice to, you can use what you've got. You can use your props such as your blankets, right? You'll fold them up kind of like so. But if you have a couch cushion handy, maybe grab that too because that might come in handy in a little bit. So we're gonna meet up in Sphinx. So we'll come all the way down to the belly, elbows underneath the shoulders or forward of the shoulders. This is Sphinx. We'll take this step by step. We're just gonna do one leg at a time. Uh, so Arda Danyarasana, half bow. I'm gonna take my right forearm and kind of angle it across my mat and then I'm gonna bend my left knee. So right forearm, angling it across my mat, bend the left knee, and then reaching back with the left hand, maybe you bind the hand to the outer ankle. Okay, so I'm intentionally reaching back, hand to outer ankle, thumbs pointing down towards the floor. If I've got that bind, I'm gonna turn the left chest forward towards the top of my mat, press the floor away with my right forearm and kick the foot into the hand. If you don't have the bind, here's your work. You're just reaching back and kicking the heel to the glute. So same thing we've been practicing this whole class. It doesn't need to change now. Whatever you're doing, breathe. Take one more breath in your current shape. And if you've got a hold of the ankle, release it slowly without flinging the foot backward, stacking the hands underneath the forehead, rest the forehead on the hands. You can sway the hips side to side here, or you can bend the knees and sway the feet side to side. So if you're feeling this in your low back a lot, I want you to back out 50% try, 50% less. Think about engaging the glutes and the hamstrings. Think about squeezing the shoulder blades together. Think about tilting the pelvis, the tip of the pelvis, so the tailbone, towards the back of your knees. So you want to keep the length in the lumbar spine. Let's try the second side. So come up to elbows, left forearm centers kind of like diagonal across the mat, bend the right knee, and then reach the right hand back. Okay, so if the ankle is there within hand's reach, you can grab the outer ankle with the palm of the right hand. And then you'd be turning your right chest forward, so you're kind of angling your shoulders forward towards the top of the mat, and then kicking the foot into the hand pressing the floor away with that left forearm. Think about tip of the tailbone, tucking towards the backs of the knees. So find length in the lumbar spine. And then if you're not binding, just practice breathing, engaging hamstrings, glutes, and shoulder blades. Wherever you are, start to release. Take a moment, hands, Stacked, forehead resting. Give your hips a little wiggle side to side. And then we'll press up to hands and knees. Take a seat in Virasana Hero's Pose. So just sitting back on the heels for a moment. Okay, so Danyarasana Bow Pose. I mentioned that it might be helpful to have a prop such as your folded blanket. It would kind of go right here on, underneath the fleshy part of the belly. And we'll start out in that sphinx in the same way. Same thing if you're using a cushion. So it's going underneath the rib cage on top of the pelvis. So you're aiming to support the fleshy part of the belly, the soft part of the belly with whatever prop you're gonna use. 
Okay, so I'm gonna come to tabletop, that props like right underneath my belly, and then I'm gonna lower myself down into Sphinx here. Make sure I'm not too low on the cushion or whatever I'm laying on. So I want my hip points at the lower part and that fleshy belly across the width of that prop. First start off by bending the left knee. Left hand can reach back. If the bind is there, go ahead, take it. And then you can just work one side at a time if you're not binding. But if you are binding, kick that foot into the hand, bend the right knee, reach the right hand back, grab the outer ankle, and then kick the feet into the hands. If you're doing this one side at a time, go ahead and switch sides. Whatever you're doing, the tailbone's tucking underneath so the tailbone's tucking towards the backs of the knees. The shoulder blades are squeezing, to, squeezing together. Hamstrings and glutes are engaged. Keep the neck long. See if you can keep breathing. And then everyone release. This time, let's press up to tabletop and take a few rounds of cat and cow. So if you came all the way into down your rasana with both hands binding the ankles. That's a pretty big, deep back bend. And so just give yourself a little bit of time here to kind of unravel out of that. One more cat cow. And then we'll do a nice little forward fold passive release with some hip work. So I'll give you the option for pigeon. We're gonna send the right knee forward towards the right wrist. Option to extend that left leg back long or roll all the way to your right hip and bend the left knee deeply. And then you can fold forward over that right shin or the right knee. Just be mindful of how much pressure you're putting on the right knee. So if the hips can square towards the mat with that left leg extended, then sleeping pigeon's probably okay with that left leg extended. Okay, if all of your weight's kind of pressing down on that right knee, then I recommend bending both knees. Left knee kind of sneaks up behind the right foot. If you still have your props nearby, you can gather them underneath the chest and fold over the front of your mat. Take about three more breaths. So now we're kind of counterbalancing all that work we did to strengthen glutes and hamstrings. Now we're lengthening, in particular, probably mostly glute for, for most of us and outer hip. Take one more breath here in your sleeping pigeon. Hands underneath the shoulders, lift up. Roll all of your weight to your right hip, all of your weight to your right hip, and then allow that left leg to move forward in front of your right shin. So you're just sitting in a cross-legged seat. If you have the flexibility, you, you can take that left ankle on top of the right knee, but don't force it. Let it be an easy cross-legged seat, unless this is something, the stacking of the ankle on top of the knees, that you can do with that left knee pretty close to that right ankle, okay? Otherwise, just don't worry about it. Let's take the left hand like outside of the hip, right arm, reach it overhead. Breathe into the right waist, the right rib cage. And then take the right hand down towards the floor, circle it around to the top of the mat, and fold over the legs. Doesn't matter how far you fold, your forward fold might just be the tuck of the chin into the chest. Breathe into your back body. Root down through both sits bones.
And then with the shins crossed, let's come forward tabletop. We'll set up for the second side. Left knee forward, you're gonna set up whatever's gonna be best for this left knee. So it might be rolling to that left hip and bending the right knee a lot. It might be keeping that right leg straight. When you're ready to fold over the front leg, shin or knee, maybe you're taking a prop with you. So worrying a lot less about what it looks like. And then notice so much more how it feels to be in your body right now. Take about three more breaths here. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. As you sit up here, all the weight moves to that left hip so the right leg can move forward in front of the left shin. It's either the easy cross-legged seat or the ankle can stack on top of the bottom knee. Don't force it though. Right hand off to the side here. Sweep the left arm overhead. You're just breathing length into that left rib cage, left waist. And then sweeping that left hand forward and down towards the top of the mat, fold over the legs, any amount. Take one more breath here. And then we'll start to unwind on our backs. On your way down to Shavasana, if there's any last movement you want to take, feel free to take it. I'm just going to set us a timer here for a minute, knowing that you can take longer. I encourage you to take longer if you have the time. Let's take a collective breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale the air out. Eventually settling into your stillness, into your Shavasana. So again, if you have the time, please stay longer. If you need to move on with your day, start to awaken the body gently. Arms can reach overhead when you're ready. Breathe in. Breathing out, bending the knees, rolling off to a side. Pressing up to a very brief supported seat. You can take one of your props and use it to Elevate the sits bones. Let's take about three rounds of breath here. Hands resting on the thighs. Inhale deeply through the nose. Slight pause at the top of that inhale. Sip in one more breath of air. And then exhale, let it all go. Twice more like that. Deep, deep breath in. Slight pause at the top, one more sip of air. Exhale, let it go. Last breath round here, inhale. Pause, sip in one more breath. Exhale, let it go, let it rest. Joining the hands together at the heart, bowing the chin to the chest, taking a moment to honor your effort and your practice. To all of our teachers, past, present, future, to the teacher within your own heart. Namaste, yogis.
All right, everyone, thanks for being with me today. Hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves and come back again soon.